I will do whatever we can to build a bully. Those ain't my words. That's what Eric DaCosta said back on January 29th of 2019 in regards to the Baltimore Ravens. Here we are in July of 2024, and he has an opportunity to make his words come to fruition in more ways than one. We're going to get into it shortly, but before we do, team, keep it clean. Make sure you click the thumbs up button, leave a like on the video, and also subscribe to the channel because I don't want you missing out on nothing. Turn the notifications on. So when we drop a video, drop anything, YouTube will kindly let you know. So, of course, today, I'm sure you heard the word by now. Brandon Ayuk has officially requested to be traded from the San Francisco 49ers. Let's read the report from Mike Garofalo. It says, source, 49ers all-pro wide receiver Brandon Ayuk has officially requested a trade after an offseason of unsuccessful attempts to reach an extension. Despite a recent meeting, the Niners haven't been willing to engage in negotiations since May. So Ayuk has respectfully asked out. Ooh, them 49ers, they shut him down a long time ago. That, that was two months ago. And they ain't budging. So he's like, you know what? Y'all ain't budging. Then budge me on up out of here. So he's requested to be out. So... What does that mean? Well, first, before we get into what it could mean, let's look at what Adam Schefter had to say. Because Adam Schefter, he's trying to be a little vibe killer. Um, he said the following. Source, other teams that have reached out and spoken to San Francisco have been told that the 49ers have no intention of trading this grown old wide receiver, Brandon Ayuk, who officially has requested a trade. 49ers open training camp next week. Now, that's something that we all heard before. When a player requests a trade, the team says, oh, no, we ain't trying to trade them. But a lot of times that can mean like, hey, you need to up the offer for whatever it is that you're trying to give us in order to acquire this player. But Adam Schefter, he decided he wanted to be a double vibe killer because he said the following. In the past, the 49ers have had players such as Debo Samuel and Robbie Gold also request trades before reaching deals with both players. The 49ers intend to keep Brandon Ayuk, not trade him. I don't like that. But I also don't care about it. Eric DaCosta, you shouldn't care about it either. Because, look, with the Baltimore Ravens, y'all let me know. Be honest. Be straight up. Please tell me in the comment section if right now you are fine with this wide receiver room. If you feel like this wide receiver room is good enough to get the job done. If you do, that's great. If not, that's great too. Either way, it's fine, and I respect either opinion. But where I'm coming from is if you were to add somebody of significance, and we've been saying this for a long time, this ain't nothing new now, but if you were to add somebody of significance, I think that would be such a smart move because it would give you that much more flexibility. It would take that much pressure off a lot of guys who haven't faced the pressure before or maybe have not lived up to the pressure before. It would make life so much easier for the guys in the wide receiver room also for your quarterback and all your other pass catches as well. Like, think about it. If you had a room that featured, obviously, Lamar Jackson as your quarterback, Mark Andrews and Isaiah Likely as your tight ends, but at the wide receiver room, Zay Flowers, oof, Brandon Ayuk, Rashad Bates, Nelson Aguilar, Tez Walker. See, adding somebody like him, it makes everybody that much better, and it makes your wide receiver room that much more diverse and dynamic and skilled too, by the way. So Brandon Ayuk is somebody that he got a good amount of speed. He got hands. He's a physical wide receiver. He gets you the yak. Again, when you look at his numbers, he ain't been nothing but productive, and he's been extremely consistent in the process. Going back to his rookie year, 60 catches, 748 yards, five touchdowns. Uh, sophomore season, 56 catches, 826 yards, five touchdowns. So the yards went up. The catches went down. The average per reception went up. 2022, he broke out. 78 catches, 1,015 yards, eight touchdowns in 2023 last season. 75 catches, 1,300 yards, and seven touchdown so you see the consistent improvement with his numbers now if he were to become a Baltimore Raven we could not and should not in my opinion expect him to get numbers like this expect him to get that many catches like that but one thing I will say is if he were a Baltimore Raven while his catches may be down while even the yards may be a little bit lower I guarantee you the average would be a lot higher because with the Baltimore Ravens they base their offense, especially their passing offense. It's not about the yardage total. It's about efficiency. They are very, very big on efficiency. They have been for a while. It's been like that for years. And under Todd Munkin, it seems like the volume, the volume has been increasing as well under Todd Munkin. But they still are predicated a lot on efficiency, especially at the wide receiver room. So with Brandon Ayuk... He could help continue to usher in Todd Munkin's offense 
while improving the Baltimore Ravens overall as a team and just really making them that much more dominant, making them that much more of a bully to not only the AFC North, but really the rest of the entire league. And that would be such a beautiful thing. But then I know some people are thinking, well, compensation. What about the compensation for Brandon Ayuk? What or would you be willing to give up to acquire a wide receiver of his caliber? Well, I know I don't think it would be really anything crazy. It would be a second round pick. But the reason I say that is because you would have to pay him. You would have to pay him a hefty new contract. Now, I know a lot of Ravens fans are like, oh, we don't want to do that. They're not going to do that. Well, why not? Why not get out your comfort zone, man? Why, why, why not do something extraordinary in order to really, really try to take that next step? Like, you, they started to do it last year. You saw what they paid Odell Beckham Jr. They ain't never paid no wide receiver like that, ever. But they did it with a hurt Odell Beckham Jr. and often injured Odell Beckham Jr. While Odell Beckham Jr., he was cool. He brought a nice vibe to the Baltimore Ravens and whatnot. He wasn't the Odell Beckham Jr. of old, but they still, they paid him a lot. He hadn't played in a year and a half. And they paid him $15 million guaranteed. These, these are all Ravens, all Baltimore Ravens, who we know they don't be paying no wide receivers like that. They stepped out of their comfort zone. Why? They wanted to make their quarterback happy. This is a perfect opportunity to make your quarterback extremely happy. Happy now, Brandon Ayuk adding him to the Baltimore Ravens would be lovely. I would just go crazy for it, but he isn't the only possible option. And actually, in my opinion, if Baltimore Ravens were to add this next receiver, then that would honestly make me even more happier than adding a Brandon Ayuk. And who is that? Well, let's listen to Tammy's question. She said. What are the chances that the Seahawks will trade one DK Metcalf to the Baltimore Ravens? Oh, I love these questions. What are the chances? Hmm, I'm not sure. It depends on what the Seahawks are willing to do. It depends on how early they will be willing or not willing to make this move. If it's before the season starts, say, for instance, like now. Um, then I think it will take a little more to sort of pry DK Metcalf away from the Seattle Seahawks. Reason being because the season hasn't started. Everybody got high hopes right now. But where it could possibly happen for a little bit less would be if the season's going on. And we'll say, for instance, we're in like week five, week six. The Seahawks are struggling. They going through it. Oh, man, they facing all kinds of problems. Mike McDonald ain't working out like he had hoped so far. That's when teams are really willing. When the ship starts sinking, people trying to get off board. So that would be where the Baltimore Ravens could really make a swoop for Seattle Seahawks wide receiver DK Metcalf. Now, if it's me, I'm trying now. I'm trying to get somebody early. Again, same reason for Brandon Ayuk to just have somebody proven and somebody who has been dominant. In this league and it has also been very consistent as well DK Metcalf would be such an amazing get for the Baltimore Ravens because again the speed the big playability the average that like DK Metcalf got it the physicality like we talked about how physical Brandon Ayuk is DK Metcalf is even more physical than Brandon Ayuk in my humble opinion so with DK Metcalf for the Baltimore Ravens if they could get him ooh. Woo, Bullies. Next question came from my guy Dave. He said, "Hey, Graven, I'm curious to hear your take on this. Do you think Malik Cunningham wins, wins the sixth wide receiver spot, not only for his ability to see the field as a wideout, but from a QB perspective, and to possibly be an emergency QB if all else goes wrong? And say Lamar, Josh, and Leary get hurt. Oh my goodness. Uh, then who would be there to step in uh, if, say, this is the middle of a game, and say Emory is only on practice squad but not game ready? Do you think he gets an advantage?" because of his skill set at receiver and his experience at quarterback. That's a tricky, tricky question. Could Malik Cunningham win that six wide receiver spot? I don't know. I, I think he would be more on the practice squad because, again, you got Bateman, you got Zay, uh, you got Nelson Aguilar, you got Tez Walker. So that's four wide receivers that are locks right there. So if you got two more spots, you could be thinking Deontay Hardy, Tylen Wallace, because you may want to have those two uh, return men 
Uh, and then Tylen Wallace will be they could both be used as wide receivers as well. So that, and then you got a lot of undrafted rookie free agents as well. So but with Malik Cunningham, he just made the switch to wide receiver. And they're saying that he has been looking good and whatnot at training camp. That's also going to tell the story, too. But that'd be tough. That'd be tough. Now, like you did mention, he has played quarterback, so he can sort of get a, a feel for both positions and the perspective of both positions, like you mentioned. But would it be enough to have him take up a roster spot, especially as a six wide receiver? Right now, I, I just I don't see it. Um, but he also said, I'm also curious to hear your opinion on this. Do you think that the Ravens are more dangerous now than with Ingram that the than in 2019 Ingram was coming off a great year with the Saints Lamar was catching people by surprise you couldn't really go for Lamar and Ingram uh was still in his prime to where it put defenders in a jam now with Henry I've actually seen players look afraid to tackle him even with the angle on him with Munkin uh making things not one-dimensional well except minus AFC championship game but anyway uh it can really be interesting because when you get on the goal line you can not only score with Lamar, but you can score with Henry. Not only do you have to fear Lamar, but you have to fear Derrick Henry. Not only do you have to fear Lamar as a passer, but Derrick Henry as well. Imagine Derrick Henry on a goal line as a Wildcat QB. He fakes the dive and throws it to a wide open Andrews or Ricard. Now, real quick with that part. Um, but just to answer your question, are they more dangerous now than they were in 2019? I, I would definitely say so because while they may not be catching the league off guard, People know who Lamar is, and you saw last year, they, they knew who Lamar was, and he just went out and won another MVP. And he held back a lot during the regular season as well. You saw a lot of times where we were like, hey, Lamar, take off. He was like, no, no, I ain't taking off. I ain't running. I don't feel like it. So he held back a lot last year and still won an MVP. And they knew, they knew that he was coming, but he still got the job done and some. So I would definitely say that they are more dangerous now than they were back then, especially because you have a much more mature Lamar Jackson as well, a much more experienced Lamar Jackson and even smarter Lamar Jackson. So they're more dangerous now than they were back then. Now you talked about with Derrick Henry. You said uh, you, you, you not only have to feel Lamar as a passer, but Derrick Henry as a passer as well. Because, yeah, yeah, you know Derrick Henry be good for them trick plays. But he said just imagine Lamar. Oh, no. He said uh, De Derrick Henry – um, on the goal line as a Wildcat QB, and he fakes the dive and throws it to a wide open Andrews or Ricard. He said, just imagine Lamar lined up as a tight end on a goal line pass, and with his agility and cutting ability, runs a simple tight end trail route, which is a route I think could get him open quick enough to catch and get down before taking a hit. Imagine Derrick Henry throwing a touchdown to Lamar Jackson when he's getting tired of catching his own passes. He can have someone else, someone else throw a pass to him instead. <laughs> what are your thoughts on this? Now, with that, something that I really loved about the Baltimore, and you said this would be on the goal line. Something that I really loved about the Baltimore Ravens last year, especially when they got to the goal line, they didn't do all the funny stuff. They didn't do all the trick plays. They didn't do all the gimmicks. They didn't do, no, no, no. They were just so straightforward last year. They said, all right, we on the goal line. We on the five-yard line. We on the two-yard line. We on the three-yard line. Hand it off to Gus Edwards straight up. They ain't play no games. We've seen so many times in years past where the Baltimore Ravens, they keep, keep playing games on the goal line. They keep playing games when they get inside the red zone. But last year, they took the games. They threw the games out the window. They took the games off of the field, and I love that. So with somebody like Derrick Henry, yeah, he got the ability to throw the ball. I'm sure they're going to have some time, some plays where they do that. But with Derrick Henry, just be straight up. Do what you did last year. Be straight up. Like, who, who going to stop him? You, once you get that offensive line right, we'll see how that works itself out. But you got Derrick Henry. Then you got Pat Ricard blocking for him, leading the way, and then still Derrick Henry. Like, that's so much to deal with. And like you mentioned, you said you've seen people still get scared to tackle Derrick Henry, even when they got the angle on him. So with that being said, instill that fear. Continue to instill that fear in them and just be straightforward. Don't play no games. 